All right, what's going on? I'm going to be going over my uh, universe theory that I have been writing for over the last four years. Uh, here is, I have a lot. Um, I'm going to just do a short overview of all this. Um, I guess we can just kind of go through it real quickly to show you what I have. Um, I will be going through all of these because some of these are, they, they have a, they showcase a piece of the theory, but they don't really initiate a main point. And I'm going to go over the main points in this video. Um, let's see. There's one point, yeah, this one. Um, initiation of singularities, so creating a Big Bang event, is the singularity absorb all the matter in one area, and depending on the soup cloud that we'll talk about later, depending on the distance of that, there's enough force being generated between these two points that it separates a piece of the singularity so it overcomes the gravitational force of the singularity enough sp energy space for a reaction to take place uh, the only problem i have with this is where does the photon come from is it is it just in space just chilling there and w when it opens up it allows a reaction to occur I, but the one the one word that is not used in astronomy that baffles me because I, I, I'm a biology major and, and teacher so I hear concentration gradients all the time and I've never heard it talking about astronomy never not once and that's one of those important principles of biology anatomy physiology all that stuff is concentration gradients so what I did is I applied that to universal mechanics so, what we will get to, if I can find the page, okay, there it is, okay, man, I should really, okay, I'm actually going to Go over you. Here we go. Okay, this is the main. This is the main picture. This demonstrates the entirety of my theory. The entirety of it. So we're gonna go over this real quickly. Inside, dark matter made up of broken down pieces of normal matter. So gluons, uh, fucking um, tor uh, corks, and all that stuff. Uh, up, down quarks, and the, the, the pieces of protons, neutrons, and electrons. Most of the electrons will be in here, so this is inherently negative. Now, the outside is going to be inherently positive. Inherently positive, and we'll understand why. Okay. This is what I call the interactive area of the multiverse. Each one of these little globules right here these are singularities. Boom, 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 boom. This is the edge of this. Let's say this is our universe. This is the edge of our universe. Okay. So this is the visible universe that we are in. What this is demonstrating is all these singularities eventually will end up into a bunch of black holes. So if you go into this, there, every galaxy has a supermassive black hole. The supermassive black hole is going to absorb all the matter and once there's no matter to absorb these black holes start to dissipate dissipate as you can see they're tightly compact as they're just billions and billions and billions of years trillions of years probably I call them dead black holes because they pretty much dead because they're what I call a, a, li a black hole that is alive is actually actively ab absorbing matter a dead black hole doesn't have matter to absorb so it has no reactions there's no there's nothing transferring so it slowly dissipates dissipates bam this is when soup the, I call it the soup the dark matter soup dark matter can soup contains matter that is inactive at an end is so close together that reactions are not able to take place they're not able to take place 
but it's still dissipating. Once it gets to a singularity event, it forms a halo around that universe. It's like a sphere around that universe. And then it initiates a singularity event, big bang event, generation of the universe, so on and so forth. Okay. Now we'll go back to this. Okay. Now we're zooming in. So right here are stars. Stars are what I call I matter creators. They create matter that is able to interact with a photon. Matter that is able to interact with a photon. These stars send out photons and most of the photons will get absorbed by active matter or interactive matter. The ones that reach this now you gotta think this if I can find it Mm -hmm. Nope, let me find the... Okay, yeah, here it is. Okay. See the photon? Comes out. Now, on the outside you hear you have what? Protons and neutrons in pieces of protons and neutrons. When you send a photon out there, you create hydrogen and ions of hydrogen, depending on if you have a neutron, if you don't have a neutron, whatever. Now, here comes the concentration gradient. Since there is way, way more hydrogen in the outside of the universe compared to the inside of the universe. Now you gotta think, there's a lot of hydrogen inside the universe inside of the universe or in the center part of the universe but is is constantly being decreased again is a vital point part of physiology there's actually a negative feedback loop it's constantly decreasing the amount of hydrogen and making helium and other elements so hydrogen is going to want to go down its concentration gradient into the center of the universe constantly replenishing the matter until it is absorbed by a black hole. Now, this is getting into the spin trajectories of stuff that's ejected from the black hole cloud. Um, so like here is a good example of it. So if it's hit, let's say it hits it straight on. No, no rotation. No rotation means no wave. So what I said what happened then is if something has no wave, well, what a wave and spinning does is it dissipates the force that is contacting that entity. If it's going straight through, you're going to be getting all the force in right at the front. Therefore, I I kind of thought, hey, if you're getting all the force in the front, it's going to start breaking apart into pieces. This is going to saturate the outer universe. But these things are so far apart due to constantly going down and up and down their concentration gradients that they're going to slowly start coming into the center of the universe, the pieces of protons and neutrons. Now, if you have a little bit of a sideways spin, you're going to knock that proton out. It's going to grab a hold of a neutron or just have the hydrogen ion, and it's going to do the charges as well. And other photons that are coming along, it's going to start spinning and oscillate initiating a wave-like pattern it's also, that's, that is also going to affect the photons that are coming out. So, now how, is it, how does this increase universal expansion? Okay. So, now you got to think about the center of the universe. The center of the universe is going to be have a huge gravitational pull, so it's going to be pulling in the matter that's closer to it. So all this matter right here is going to be 
it's going to be going out due to the force of the Big Bang, but it's, it's going to be slowing down until it interacts with its concentration gradient relative to the outside of the universe. So you have a galaxy, let's see you have a galaxy right here coming out from the Big Bang. And there's not a lot of matter around it. It's going to want to go where? Boom. Relative to the, let's say there's a galaxy right here, relative to that. So this is going to start speeding up relative to that. This also is also getting affected by the gravity, but it's also getting dissipated by the concentration gradient. So once this eventually gets absorbed to a black hole, it'll go into the loop and get dissipated. All right. Collide with dark matter. I was kind of saying though. Okay, this is just the filament theory. This is pretty, pretty generic theory. Um, this is kind of explaining the soup coming into the the universe, but I think due to the photons, it's it. This is saying that there's the pressure exerted by the dark matter pushing up against the other matter slowing it down except for photons photons can run through that matter no no, no problem okay i talking about the wavelengths Okay, now, <sighs> I'm excited about this. So hydrogen's coming along. And it contacts a, what creates stars? Nebula, ne nebula. How does something, how, where does the force come from to push two hydrogen atoms together to initiate that first little bit of gravity condensation? So the hydrogen, hydrogen, helium. Helium's heavier, so it's gonna start drawing in stuff because of its gravity. Another hydrogen, another hydrogen, helium, and it's going to start to a star. The star is going to then emit photons, which is then going to go out and hit the dark matter. <coughs> Adding hydrogen to the nebula creates enough of the disturbance that forms the helium that's blah 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 blah, what it is set. Okay, yeah, these are just the levels of it. Extremely light particles, empty space, extremely large elements, extremely large elements. Now, when you get here, all the electrons are kind of just, I guess, like, like a sieve. It's just they're going through the holes that are not occupied by the larger matter. It's going to end up being a negative, and the outside is positive. So, positive, hydrogens are positive, so it's going to away from each other. Electrons want to go towards the hydrogen or towards the outside of the universe, so it's going to speed up. If you have more photons speeding up relative to the other photons, you're going to elongate space, which is also going to create a concentration gradient, which is also going to speed up the outer parts of the universe. Okay. This is getting into the spin rates. So like, or how hydrogen is going to affect the range or the, the creation of the space relative to the the I matter creators or the stars. So you have a whole bunch of photons coming out. Hydrogen atom. That's going to draw, try to connect with the electrons. Well, the, electrons are, or the photons are going so freaking fast That it's going to get barely affected by it, but it's going to go in different directions. This is not this. Why this is important is this is going to make the filament theory a little more broader, a little broader. It's going, instead of just being real, like, like it's almost like sticks popping out, it's going to be more like an amoeba. 
is why why that's important is you don't want to have a concentration gradient that's so much longer relative to the one earlier right next to it. That's going to create a, a combustive element to where it's going to smash onto top of each other. Rotational speed. And then if you, if you have multiple electrons. All right. Still getting spin rates, spin rates. Well, the electron, or the photon destroying a proton. Uh, this is, I think, been proven, but different frequencies of light, different give up different colors. There's three types of quarks. You got red, green, and blue. Red, green, and blue absorb the associated colors, initiating pulses inside of the protons and neutrons. Um, there is one section, I think it's in the back, how you actually create, how neutrons and protons actually diff go back and forth with one another. Okay. Okay, this is pretty cool. Broken down nuclei, up down quarks. Fundamental strong nuclear force, or down quarks, blah, blah, blah. Directly interact with photons or be the only particle that can be influenced by photons. Relative to their charge. Interesting. Pretty much the saying there's a little dark in the, the exact center of the black hole, like the heart, is dark energy. Super, super, super condensed. Be photons. Or not actually not having photons be what? Electrons? I'm still, I'm still obviously working this out, but I wanted to get the main idea. Okay, yeah, this is the one I was saying. Where's neutrons to protons? Okay. Okay, interactive matter, interactive energy, so photon, dm. Dark energy is when a black hole can still produce force. still exhibits a force on the environment. Old matter is unstable with a lot of radiation. The proton from the dark plasma drops below a point. Da, da, da. 
Electronic comes up, which is into my matter. More neutrons, more protons, I matter ring. Mass, more neutrons, more protons because of the weight, because of gravity. Okay, I'm about to watch this now. <laughs> 